my new book, Motivational Moments at DLD28002 at yahoo.com or 813-394-5875. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's Wednesday. That's right. It's Working Wednesday. My name is Margaret Debalot. I am Miss D, the job coach. It's Wednesday. It's time for you to get to work. That's right. Get. I see you. I see you. I see you. Please, 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 please get your feet off the couch. Please get your feet off the couch. Listen. We've got to help you get back to work. I know you've been thinking about it. I know you've been wanting to do it. I know that you've had some barriers and some roadblocks and you had one or two interviews and you're like, Miss Dita, job coach, how do I make this thing work? Well, don't worry. Don't worry. I see the gray hairs on the back of your neck and that's why I come on and work in Wednesday. Listen, I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you keep your career going forward. You're only on the couch today because you're trying to figure out what's next. And that's why I'm here. I'm here to help you get the information that you need, the ideas, the new fresh ideas that you need to get it going forward. So you know how this works, right? First, you've got to go get the pen and a piece of paper. Please go and get a pen and piece of paper. Go get two pens because one of those pens is going to run out of ink. I'll wait. Okay, that's all you got. We've got four steps to helping you get to work write them down here they go we're going to start with networking applying interviewing and following up number one is networking number two is applying number three is interviewing and number four is following up so each week each week that you join me here on working wednesday i am so grateful that you spend this hour with me and my guest that's right guest i'm going to introduce him in a minute hold on hold on it's my show follow my lead i'm the coach i'm not going to let you hurt yourself my goal is for you to travel through your job search safely this week, we're going to talk about applying for jobs. Listen, I if you roll your eyes one more again, we're not going to get along. We're not going to get along. You making all them faces is not making the situation any better because I know why you're rolling your eyes because you hate online applications. You are disgusted with this whole process. Nobody's calling you back. I get it. But don't worry. The coach is here. The coach is here to help you smoothly move through this process. I'm going to teach you how to fill out those applications in such a way that you will be happy to see an application because you know what to do with it. You know how to get through it quickly and effectively and how to track it and follow up afterward. Mm -hmm. I see. I see your face. I see your face. You're saying, Miss D, the job coach, how are we going to do all that? Well, sit tight. Sit tight, sweetie. Sit tight. Here we go. So I want to introduce you to my guest. I told you that I need to bring a guest in each week because other people know really interesting things. And I look for people who can lend a perspective on the topic of the day. I look for people who can give you advice as you're going through this job search process. And I told you, sometimes I go under a bush. Sometimes I go behind a tree. But this time I went to the beach and found this one. That's right. That's right. So uh, I have a, a great guest with me today. He's uh, an amazing guy, has an amazing resume. But Nate Coco, I want you to tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Good morning, sir. Good morning. And thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so right now I own a small business, an insurance company, uh, a little insurance agency. We have about eight people working at the office. And um Married, got four kids, uh, went to Ohio State and transferred to University of Florida. So two polarizing schools, probably. Yes, yes. <laughs> and um, I'm not a big sports fan, so go whatever school you, you love. And um, <laughs> Nate's not taking sides. Listen, he's a beach kind of guy. He's like, eh, Kuna Matata, we're just going to yeah. hang out. Mm-hmm. No need to have all this rivalry nonsense mm-hmm. going on. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm a pretty spiritual guy. I live my, my life's mission statement is love all the world, love humanity, and try to serve it. And, um, you know, I try to, to reflect that in everything that I do throughout my life and throughout my business and throughout my family. 
And, um, you know, that's, that's me in a nutshell, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, you can, you know, me in the first five minutes that you get to meet me, I'm, I'm not too complicated. So, um, I, I love people. I love, um, entertaining. I love, um, you know, being in front of the crowd. So I wear my, my headphones like this because I used to be a DJ. Hey, and, look uh, at that. I didn't know that about you, <laughs> It was you, a mobile Nate. DJ, so it's not a, you know, I wouldn't call those the real guys, you of know. Of course they are. But, Listen, if you, you know, know how to spin them I could them rock things, a wedding pretty good. Oh, right. Oh, right. So, listen, everybody's uh-huh. got hidden talents. And and sometimes I remind people that your hidden talents are your um, your intersection points with other people, right? So DJ CEO is over there, and he's doing the things and making us sound all nice and crisp and clear and sound effects and nice music and all that stuff. And I appreciate the work that he does because I've seen a lot of buttons over there and it's complicated looking to me. <laughs> but Nate, to be with a guy like you, I mean, like if I walked up to you, I would not have thought that you were a DJ. Not at all. So nope. people have hidden talents. And I, I talk a lot about networking and getting to know people. And I actually met Nate through my networking, right? So I met somebody that works with Nate and said, hey, you should meet Nate. <laughs> and then I arrived at Nate's office one day and he was like, who is this lady and why is she talking to me and what are, never, what are we never. talking about? <laughs> no, he, listen, uh-huh. let me tell you something. Okay, so Nate, I'm, I'm going to tell the straw story. Go for it. Let me tell you. I, I had, okay, if you know anything about Florida and we are very conscientious about how plastics are impacting wildlife in the oceans and things of that nature. So we live in a county that has asked us not to use uh, plastic straws. And so everyone's looking for that next straw solution. And, and I have one of those metal straws, which doubles as a weapon. Yeah. I'm always concerned <laughs> about it in my purse and that somebody is going to stop me and say, ma'am, we need you to, to leave your weapon in your car, right? <laughs> this metal straw thing. So I get Nate's office. I don't know how we started talking about straws. Uh, did, I don't know if we were even talking about Who straws. Who knows? We, you know, Nate you got was two exci- squirrels in the room, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Two squirrels. Oh my God. Yes. And so, and so anyway, Nate goes, Hey, look, I got a cool thing, right? And he hands me this round uh, pod and he goes, No, open it, open it. So I open it up and it's a fold up straw, right? I got a cool a roll up silicone straw. It's yeah. hilarious. Every time I pull it out, people are like, Where'd you get that? Where'd you get that straw? And I'm like, Listen, it not only folds up, but it's got its own little case and it mm-hmm. fits in my purse real nice. And I think I can make it through security at the airport now. You can, for sure. <laughs> so, listen, it's the little things, uh-huh. right? You get to know a person and who knew that I needed a new straw? But, Nate, Nate's the kind of guy that if you have a need, he wants to help you meet the need. I like that about you, Nate. Thanks. Thanks. And, I, you know, I, I like to help people, and and you do too. You, your whole business is around helping people and getting people to the next level, and I think that's a very honorable profession to be in. You know, professions that help the world and do good in the world are, are uh, places that I want to be involved in personally and places that I want to support as well. So thank you. Thank mm. you. Thank you. You know, I, uh, I have a movement, hashtag change the world. I'm actually wearing my bling version of my hashtag change the world shirt today. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, encouraging people to engage and, and connect with people in their community that can help them. And when I talk about networking in the context of your job search, what I'm saying is you've got to connect with people that know people that can help you along this journey of job search. I mean, I've said it uh, at least a hundred times in my career, job search sucks. The, the process of being examined by another person to see if you're worthy of working f- with them when you know that you have skills and you have a strong desire. I mean, it's just hard. It is just a hard thing. And so when I get alongside of someone and I say, listen, you know somebody that can hire you or help you get hired. You've got to talk to them. You've got to find the intersection points. Now, if I'm looking for a mobile DJ, like in a pinch, Nate could rock a wedding for me. That's right. That's, good that's right. That's DJ really- Crisp. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I know a lot of DJs, and so that's you know that's useful information, Nate. I um, don't think that anybody is going to um, come looking for you first for the DJ thing, but. They pinch. still ask. Do they really? Yeah. yeah. L- listen, once you know somebody's got that skill, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, you need a little side change, Nate. Mm-hmm. We, we, we got you. Yeah. Got you. Thanks. I think people need to have. I think people need to have a plan A, a plan B. You know, I've got like C, D, E, and F mm-hmm. right about now. So, got to be multifaceted. The world is changing. Yes. You- 
can't rely on the old the old ways. Well, multiple streams of income, right? That's what uh, Warren Buffett, you know, many, many very successful, financially mm-hmm. successful people tell you, you know, you've got to have multiple streams of income and you got to have a, a fall forward and a fall back Absolutely. these days, you know. So l- let's talk about um, how people apply for jobs. So, Nate, let me tell you, here's how I break it down. I believe there is a, a process to applying for jobs. So there's stuff you've got to do before. Every, Absolutely. Yeah, every application has like some basic information that you know the answers to, but for some reason when you click on that apply button, all that information falls out of the bottom of your feet. So I tell people all of that basic information that's on an application, you know, your name, your address, your uh, identification information, the places that you've lived, the places that you've worked, I tell people to make a massive data sheet. Go research the the addresses, the phone numbers, go find the old email addresses, all of the the data, that static data that's not going to change from application to application. Make sure that you understand that it is a legal document. Mm -hmm. Let's say that again. An application is a legal document. It is your formal request for employment. And it's very important that you have accurate information to Wait, put on you your You shouldn't just make stuff up on, on your resume? Nay, that's the DJ in you. <laughs> we need you to stop it. Oh, man, I should tell all those people applying to, to Team Coco not to make everything up. <laughs> Well, here's the thing. You know what? You can. You can. Sure, you can. You can do whatever you want. I always tell people that. You can do whatever you want. But the reality is it's way too easy for people to verify the information that you put on an application. And once they deem you a liar, well, you're done. You're so done. And you don't know who people know, right? Like most people wouldn't say, oh, yeah, Margaret and Nate, they definitely know each other. Nate looks like a guy that you would find literally hanging out on the beach. He just does. He's got that, you know, relaxed beach guy look about himself, which I like that. And they wouldn't necessarily say, oh, yeah, yeah, they must be fast friends. So you (laughs) never know who people know. That's my point. Absolutely. You never know who people know. So Nate has an experience where somebody lies on an application, and then I run across the same person. Nate might be, oh, (laughs) Margaret, mm, that one. Let me tell you about the experience I had with that one. Mm -hmm. So this is why it's not fruitful, and it's very foolish, especially in today's world with computers, because I can Google just about everything. Hey, Nate, I haven't Googled you yet. Hmm, I'm going to have to do that later. (laughs) Um, It's all good. It's all good stuff. Is it? Okay. Well, don't Google me, okay? All right. Thanks. I'm trying to clear that stuff up. Some of it just keeps coming up. It just keeps coming up. But listen, Uh it wasn't always straight and narrow for me. Some of it was crooked and dark, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm in recovery. I'm working on myself. Hey, everyone deserves a second chance. Oh, thank you so much, Nate. (laughs) (laughs) I am actually a job coach that works with second chance candidates, so I get it. You know, the whole Mm -hmm. Google thing, people are afraid of what you'll find when you go to Google them sometimes. Maybe they are a person who needs a second chance, and the data that's out there may not be reflective of who they are now, which is why you need to be accurate and truthful so that you can tell your story. People respect you even when some of it is dark and scary. Mm -hmm. If you come out front and simply say, listen, this is who I was. Here's who I am now. Let me talk about how my skills are going to meet the needs of your job. Remember, it's all about the job. So have that data sheet with all of that information on it. Take some time. Take the time to create the data sheet so that the application is not as laborious. That's right. That's a word. Laborious. <laughs> <laughs> DJC, I was like, this girl in these words. <laughs> right? It, right? Because it's labor intense. People go, I hate filling out applications. It takes an hour. I got to sit there and fill in all those boxes on the computer. And oh, my goodness. But it's a necessary evil, right? Mm-hmm. That's how you get the job. You've got to... Uh, put in the application but if you do the pre-work it makes it a little less intimidating it makes a little less uh, cumbersome so nate i'm gonna i'm gonna put you on the spot here so what are some fun things you've seen with applications uh, of people coming into your business and applying for a job you know the the most common common thing that knocks people out of my interview process is my first question is tell me tell me about yourself right and it's my first question and um, and it's really my first question because I'm trying to pull up my normal interview questions. So I just want them to kind of chat a little bit. So, um, you know, your first step is is networking, you know, and and people 
most people don't do that at all. They don't, this is the first interaction they've had with me. They haven't had any attempt to learn about, learn about the company that they're applying for. And, um, and not only that, the, the worst part of it all is they haven't prepared, they, they have no idea about the job description. And, and when I ask them, tell me about yourself, they're saying, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a pharmacy uh, major for, I want to be a pharmacy tech. And, and Nate, you don't own a pharmacy, but <laughs> no, I don't own a pharmacy. Surprise, right? So how does that? So fit, right? think about the employer. The employer, we're looking for people that we don't love hiring. You know, I, I think I don't love it. You know, I I want somebody that's going to stay there and be with Team Coco forever, and we're going to build a family in our office. You know, people that you know can call ten years from now and, and talking to my team, and they can grow a relationship with, right? What I don't want is somebody that wants a job for six months while they're trying to finish up school and then they're <laughs> going to jump ship. Because guess what? We have expenses we have to invest into these into these people. And oh we my want gosh. The, we want to. Nate, let me tell you something. There are so many nuances to the background of this. And when we come back from the break, I really want you to talk more about that because these are things that people don't understand about why they sometimes don't get hired. It is Working Wednesday. My name is Margaret Debalot, Miss D, the job coach. This is In Touch News Radio. We'll be right back. You're listening to Tampa Bay Tammy. Your girlfriend. On In Touch Radio. In Touch Radio. My name is Gil Sampson. I didn't come from a very rich family, and so paying for college would have been very tough. I don't know if I would have been able to go to the college that I went to, and then I don't know if I would have gotten into the career that I am in. So I think Bright Futures has done a lot to shape my life. I uh, got a job as a structural engineer, and I design residential buildings, commercial buildings all over the United States. Because of Bright Futures, I was able to go to college you know, so many kids just don't even ever get that opportunity. And to be able to do it and not have any debt when I graduated is amazing. And it was all thanks to Bright Futures. Florida has created more than one million jobs in only five years. And a great education connects our students to these exciting opportunities. That's why the Florida Lottery has funded Bright Futures scholarships to help over 725,000 students attend college. Because every play is for education. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. Hi, this is Dr. Veronica Walters, also known as Dr. V, the head of school at the Walters Academy for Entrepreneurship, a place that we like to call The Way, where we're educating today's youthpreneurs to be tomorrow's billionaires through social entrepreneurship. Do you have a student who's bored, frustrated, gifted, inquisitive, creative, business-minded, then maybe you need to check the way out. Listen, we have an educational platform that allows for individualized instruction. It's strength-based, project-based, and designed to help your students become the absolute best they can while starting their own business and being an entrepreneur. If you're looking for something different and you need to find a more excellent way, then you need to visit us at The Way. That's The Way, www.thewaetampa.org. Or you can call us at 813-603-7923. We look forward to showing your student a more excellent way at the way. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Wednesday. That's right. It is Working Wednesday. My name is Margaret Debalot. I am Miss D, the job coach, and we are here to help you get on your way with your work. Now, listen, some people think that I only work with people when they are unemployed, and that's not true. Most of my clients are people who are transitioning their career to the next thing. My specialty is working with persons in transition, and people can be transitioning for many reasons. Maybe they relocated and they've got to get a new job in their new city. Maybe they had uh, some time off from work and their life looks different now. Maybe they went to school. I used to be a career counselor at a college. Uh, maybe they are coming out of high school, or maybe they just just are working somewhere and they've got up gotten up and said listen I've gotten to the top of the food chain where I am and I need to look at how do I get to the next level so I groom a lot of people who are succession planning with their career and speaking of succession planning Nate you've got an interesting story because you didn't start out 
like trying to be what you are now. Yeah, I'm not sure anybody really starts starts off saying, you know, at Career Day, I want to be a uh, astronaut or an insurance agent. You know, they, we we don't have that. So, um, you know, a, like a lot of entrepreneurial people, um, you know, my first my first job was in kindergarten. I you know went to Costco and I got a big can of bubble gum, and I was selling it out of my backpack every day until I got in trouble and couldn't sell it anymore. <laughs> you know, I used to sell cinnamon toothpicks. All right, so <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> With the Catholic right? school, I mean, and um, and and so like sales and entertaining was in my DNA, you know. So I I learned I loved magic, you know. I so I do magic and cl I became a clown in high school, um, and then I was on the student council and I uh, would hire the DJ and I was like, man, this is awesome. Uh, this guy's just rocking the crowd. Um, DJ Toad, shout out to him who got me started off in the in the business there. And um, and he just he was he was awesome. He just said, "Hey Nate, I see something in you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a full sound system and lights, and and I'm just going to anytime I need a gig until you pay this off, you just work a couple of gigs for me, and then you're off to your own, and you can do whatever you want with the with the sound system. So all throughout uh, high school and college, and only, you know a couple years in. To post college, I, I had all this gear, and I would just go and and learn the craft, and go go rock a wedding, or rock a sweet sixteen, or a frat party, or whatever they whatever it was, you know. I I prepared intensely for it. And how does that transition into State Farm? I mean, you you go to school. I'm going to school for accounting. Probably wasn't the best choice for me when I transferred down to University of Florida. I switched majors to finance, and then you quickly learn um, when you get out of school that what you've studied doesn't necessarily relate to what you're going to do. <laughs> you are trained in something. We're not always sure what it actually is because when you come out of school and you get into the the real world, as mm -hmm. we call it, that, that practical knowledge, you know, you have some basis. That's what you have when you go to school. And I try to explain that to people all the time. You have some, some theory and some basis, but it is not, it's not what you're going to be doing. And if you don't have that practical knowledge, employer are saying, okay, fine, you finished some classes, and that's nice, but what do you know how to do? Exactly. So your experience, so I'm thinking about interviewing you with your experience as a DJ and how you went through that process of learning it. What it says to me, let me tell you the things that stick out. It says that this guy's a self-starter. I'm not going to have to babysit him. I'm going to be able to give him some basic tools, and he's going to do the work that's what people are wanting you to do. Do the work to fill in the blanks. If my training has a gap in it, this guy is going to figure it out on his own because that's just naturally who he is. And how you communicate that during your interview process to a potential employer is huge. I can't even say huge, big enough to help you understand that that is what people are looking for. Yes, your education is important. I'm not discounting education, but education can come a whole lot of different ways. Formal classes, but that experiential learning piece. And understand that I am a professional facilitator. I've been training people for a lot of years. And the student that digs in and learns above and beyond my curriculum, I always know is the one that's going to stand out when it's time for them to do whatever it is. So the experience you had growing your own self in your own, you know, business, in your own uh, 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 career, because that was your career at the time as a DJ. Yeah, it was. Absolutely. And I was making... I was making great money, you know, and I had to restart the business over and over again because every time you move, you can't take your clients with you, you know. So I, I kind of learned about a little bit of the a, a dipping my toe in the, the startup culture a little bit, you know, and trying to what it takes to restart the business and how exhausting it is and how blindly you have to follow your passion sometimes. But, you know, and when we're hiring people, there's, you know, you, you want people that are self-starters, but... And, and those are great. Those people are probably going to go on and continue to do great, great things in life because they might not want to feel like they're locked up in your office. And that, and I'm okay with that because I want to see people succeed. Not all employers do, right? And then there's people that, you know, you, you want to hire, but you want them to stay there as long as you can keep them there, right? And because you want that consistency in your office. 
-hmm. and both of those both of those candidates have have value mm -hmm. um but having that value up uh, putting it out front and knowing knowing that we can work together to get to get that person where they want to go is the key and not not feeling like you can't trust that person's intentions absolutely that's what that's why i say prepare the data sheet so that all the information you provide on the application is accurate you can expand on who you are by submitting your resume and you know you jumped forward to the interview and that's really that's the that's the boots on the ground man mm -hmm. it, that you really got to prepare for that you got to know your story you got to know what what action points the employer really wants to hear about who you are you know if nate just said yeah you know i was a dj <laughs> okay why does that matter yeah why does that matter what matters is how he became a dj yes someone enabled him mentored him gave him the opportunity but then he is the one who dug in and pushed it forward and made it into something because he could have just uh, said, okay, I'm just going to work off my debt to this guy that gave me this equipment, but uh, I don't know about pushing myself out there and doing anything more. And that says something about who he is. So learning to tell your story in a way that an employer can get a visual of what type of employee you're going to be. Are you that employee who's going to want to learn the business and expand and maybe go open your own one day? Or are you the employee that really wants to dig in, learn, stay, have the stick to itiveness? You know, being able to convey that in a conversation is, mm -hmm. is critical, critical. And you see, you see a lot of people now too. They they see this this uh, this culture of like people going. They they think they make millions and billions of dollars, and it's so easy. You know, they oh they just set up a website, and all of a sudden, it, it, you know, all the money rolls in, right? Yeah, no. And they have this delusion that they didn't see. You know, people think Airbnb started a couple of years ago, but they didn't see like I think it was two thousand seven or something crazy like that for the 10 years of failures that they experienced before they even became successful in anywhere close to a, a household name like they are now. Absolutely. Right? So they have this delusion that you don't have to work hard. You don't have to have skills, right? Nonsense. So when, when people come and, and apply, I want someone that has grit, that has hustle, that that somebody that I can see that's going to be a self-starter, you know, in, in the sales side of things, you know, non I don't only hire for sales. I hire for for service, you know, tasks as well. And those people are my polar opposites. They want, you know, they, they like details. They like having tasks lists and things like that. And those things drive me crazy, you know. <laughs> so there's a balance, you know, there's balance in hiring. And you got to know yourself. And uh, are you familiar with the DISC profile? Well, actually, I use something called the, uh, the, the entrepreneur entrepreneurial mindset profile i'm certified to administer that and it's it's i'm not going to say that it's similar i will also am an administrator of disc i did that for many many years but it's all about understanding the dynamics of who you are what are your strengths what are your opportunity areas mm -hmm. what type of teams do you work best on who do you need your peers to be yeah. right so uh, identifying how the entire team is going to work together by knowing yourself by knowing where your strengths are and the things that uh you really are going to rely on your teammates to bring to the table absolutely and those that's such an easy tool to to administer if you know if you sit down with miss d and, and run through something like that and you can know something about yourself and that's and that's helpful to employers to know that you know this is what I'm good at because a lot of people are, you know, they want to tell you that you're good at everything. And, you know, and that's just not reality in, in most cases. And having having that tool and having a report or something like that so you can know yourself is such a is such a key piece to an application process. Absolutely. It's, it's knowing who you are so that you can explain it to the potential employer, being able to project yourself in a way because they ask you those really awesome questions like what are your strengths? Mm -hmm. and And people go, uh, I can type. <laughs> I type really fast. Uh -huh. I know some Microsoft. I'm, I'm a people person. <laughs> oh, man. You know what? When I used to interview every day, those are some of the things we, I mean, there's a voice in the back of the head of an interviewer, and it says, duh, yeah. you know. Um, <laughs> it's really tough when you people are answering these questions, especially I hired in a volume situation. Uh, I serviced a... 1500 seat call center so and i only hired uh, one in 10 of the people that i interviewed 
Yeah, that was our statistics. So I listened to a lot of very painful interviews, which is actually what inspired me to become Miss D, the job coach. I'm a job coach today because I used to sit on the other side of the table and painfully listen to people go through this process. And I declared, I declared that I would teach people how to do this the right way so that interviewers would have less pain. Number one, I was, you know, doing it for the team. And then the second part of that was, I don't believe that people put all this effort into finding the leads, applying for the jobs, then getting to the interview so that they can fail. Who wants to do that, right, over and over and over again? So if you can have a higher level of proficiency, if you know what you're going to say, know your story and be able to tell it in a compelling way that makes the employer say, this is the one. That's the whole point of going through this process, right? Right? You Are should, you taking you notes? You should know you got this job before you walk in the door. Right. You know, you should know I've done all the work and, and all I got to do is just check this box and they're going to hire me. You That's know? right. That's and, right. And, and if, you, if you're going there for the first time, just learning, learning about what the job's about, you know, it's it, that's a slim chance that it's going to work out. It sometimes does. Right. You get lucky. You get lucky. But they haven't the, interviewed anybody else. Do the work. You, you know, showed up do with the pre work. You know, <laughs> do that networking and everything that you got to do beforehand, because that's what a lot of your competitors are doing. They're doing all that networking, all that pre work to that's get right. that to get that job before you walk in that door. That's right. And it's more than just declaring it and owning it. It's working Wednesday. I'm Miss D, the job coach. I'll be right back. Hey, this is Agent Wright, better known as Mr. Clean. You looking for some great barbecues? Come see them two brothers in the grill. Located at 423 Virginia Street, Charleston, West Virginia. We got ribs, chicken, pulled pork, brisket, collard greens, mac and cheese, baby. Come get some. And get you a nice, smooth cigar. 304-550-4431. That is 304-550-4431. Come get some, baby. The rib man, mama, the rib man. Been in a car crash? Call Ricky. Don't know what to do? Ask Ricky. We will connect you with a lawyer and doctor experience in auto accident injuries. Call Ricky at 844-361-7425. After an auto accident, you have 14 days to seek medical attention. You may be in pain. So call Ricky. Ask Ricky for your best options. 844-361-7425. Call Ricky. Ask Ricky is a legal and medical referral service. The lawyers in our network pay to receive referrals. Hi, I'm Donald L. Dowers Jr., your motivational guru. This is the DLD Motivational Moment. One darn second. America since 2017 is suffering from a serious hiccup. 9-11 is seriously overused in a distasteful manner. Every day the cops are calling on an innocent, innocent person of color. It amazes me that America has come down to this. A person of color becomes a person of interest. Waffle House, the dorm, Starbucks is a few. This is not the lunch counters, sit-ins of the 1960s. 2019, harassed simply for being black and proud. Hold on one darn second. This has been the DLD Motivational Moment. Pre-order my new book, Motivational Moments, at DLD28-2002 at yahoo.com or 813-394-5875. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Wednesday. That's right, it's Working Wednesday. My name is Margaret DeBalot. I am Miss D, the job coach. And Working Wednesday is all about you getting insider information. That's right, it's insider information. I hope the FCC is not listening. <laughs> we're going to tell all the business that we'll be doing today, right? It's all about you getting the information that you need in order for you to be successful in the job search process. I have an amazing guest in with me today. He's a hiring manager, a business owner, a guy who knows what you need to say when you go and apply for the job. So Nate was telling us that you have to do some homework before you go to the interview. Nate, what do you mean I need to do research before I go? You know, it's probably a good idea to know what company you're applying for. 
Maybe visit their website, you know? No, Nate, no, 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 no. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So I talk to people about organizing the applications that they have applied for, right? You and yeah. I were talking about this before mm -hmm. the show. Like, do you have a file folder on your computer? Do you have a list? Do you have a notebook? Do you have note cards? Do you know where you applied? And I can't tell you how many people look at me and go, huh? What job is this for? What job are you calling me about? <laughs> What's the job description? That's, listen, Come on. what? Are you kidding me? <laughs> you don't know? And and here's the thing. Here's, here's a little tip. If you're driving in your car, do not answer the phone. Make sure that your voicemail identifies that they have reached you so they are confident in leaving a message for you to call them back. I'm talking about when the employer calls you mm -hmm. for the interview because when you answer the phone and you're in your car and you can't write anything down and you're just going, where is this again? And they hear the winds blowing, you're turning the radio and down. And that's a deal breaker, you know. Yeah. I, I, I scheduled an appointment with you at 3 o'clock and you pick up and you're driving, you know, you, that, that just tells, it, tells me everything. Clearly, this job doesn't mean much to you. you right. Know? Clearly, clearly, making a good impression upon that potential employer didn't even occur to you. So that says to me about my business, doing well in my business is probably not going to occur to you there either. And I'm mm -hmm. going to say no. That would be no and no thank you and have a great day. Mm -hmm. and, and people go, well, I didn't know who was calling. Well, that's the reason why you shouldn't have answered while you couldn't talk. Right. That's exactly the reason why you shouldn't have answered. And if you don't know where you applied, you don't know. You, you tell the person, well, can you just, can you call me back? Right. No. And the application process has changed in, in recent years with the advent of social media and everything. They have, you know, we don't just see a resume and that's all we know about you plus an interview, right? Now we can Google you. We can go to Facebook and look at your profile and see the posts that you made today or 10 years ago and think, is this the kind of person that I want representing my company? Has this person evolved? Does this person do anything good in the world, right? And if those are the things that I will, I'll judge you on is what are you doing? What are you doing with your life and in the world that's going to give me the confidence that you're going to do good and, and well from the customers that you're going to work with and interact. So what's interesting is I often tell people that volunteerism is a path to work. And I had a guy on here uh, a week or two ago, and he told us the very same story. I actually wrote an article on him that I'm getting ready to publish. And he talked about the fact that he was in one profession, but he saw a need in another area and started working as a volunteer and as a result of him working as a volunteer for this organization for six years he's now a director with them and so when I tell people it can't just be about your job it people are looking for who are you as a person when you do volunteer work even if you're unemployed get up and go volunteer somewhere you'll be mm -hmm. able to you'll get introduced to people who are the board members of these nonprofit organizations they are usually uh, corporate professionals. They're usually people that you can make a good impression with or get alongside of or get to know. I do. Uh, I have had the great opportunity to be a volunteer with Dress for Success and, and do a lot of work with Dress for Success Tampa Bay over the last uh, more than five years. And I know a lot of very significant people in the city of Tampa because of my volunteerism and because of my association. And it has absolutely nothing to do with the with the actual professional work I do. Right. And do it because you care about it, not not because you're trying to build a resume. You know, that's it's I've had people want me they want to volunteer. And then afterwards, they're like, hey, can you sign this and, and do my hours? Right. And I get that. You know, sometimes you got to get the get the hours in. But try to do something because you care about it, because you want to do it, do it. And if it's maybe not it's like helping the homeless people, maybe it's going to a job. Maybe you want to break into an industry. You know, there was the musician I was telling you about earlier. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you really love music and you're applying for an insurance job, you know, that's probably not the, the right the right path to go down. Right. Um, but if you love music so much that, you know, Eric Thomas has this video clip that's awesome, you know, more than you can breathe, you know, wow. um, and it, and you can't do anything. It's like breathing. Then use those connections. Do anything you can to get in the front door. You know, go be the janitor. Go mop the floors. Go, you know, be the personal assistant. And guess what? Over time, you're going to build relationships 
and you're going to be able to get yourself to that next level, hopefully, if you really want to put in the hard work that it takes to get to get that job. But see, by going into a place that you care about and that you're interested in, that's going to create that consistency. So mm -hmm. some people know my story. They know that I started in radio on community radio, and I had a great opportunity to sit alongside of people who were seasoned in the business, and I learned how to announce and how to station break and all of that kind of stuff, volunteering in community radio. Right. I didn't have time to go to broadcast school or that stuff. I know what I know about radio because I learned it sitting behind the mic alongside of other people that wanted to show me. I know a little bit about working a board because I sat alongside well, people you don't working a board. Well, you don't necessarily need school for a lot of this, a lot of these stuff. A lot of these things you can learn, learn on the job, you right. know, right. and, but you got to show you have that passion, you know, and you got to not make excuses. You know, I see excuses all the time about, oh, I can't do this because this happened to me. You know what? A lot of this, a lot of people grew up in bad situations, right? And there's this, there's this guy Gary Vee Gary V and said only one person in the world can complain. That's the person on the bottom. That's right. And and you know what? I get you had bad a bad situation, but now what? What are you going to do about it? Yeah. The you know? now what? You know, I say uh, a great guy uh, uh, told me one time: some will, some won't. So what? You mm -hmm. know, you just keep going. If you know what you want, you know where you're trying to go, you know what you're trying to build, people will help you. Like that that person that gifted that equipment to you, you obviously mm -hmm. showed an interest and they said, hey, I can, you know, I can help myself and I can help you. I can help myself because I can give you some gigs. You can help me with the work and I can help you. And you took the ball and you ran with it. And that's the difference. That's the difference when you sit down and tell somebody that, yeah, you have a degree and in your spare time, you do these other things. You know, uh, I often tell people about the different skills that I have and where I learned them. Right. Mm -hmm. So when DJ CEO met me, I, I shared with him that I had spent some time in community radio. And and I also shared with him that working Wednesday actually used to just be a Facebook tip that I offered once a week. I started working Wednesday as a Facebook tip, three to five minutes, and I uploaded it to, to YouTube. And somebody saw me Facebooking, and they were like, hey, you need to be here. And I was like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But it took persistence. It took me reaching out, and I had to have my story down because the first question he asked me was, uh, well, what's the show going to be? And if I had simply said, I don't know, what do you want? He just said, I want you to go and sit down and think about it, young lady, and then <laughs> maybe call me back in six years. <laughs> He's a little nicer than that. He might have given me six, oh, three years. Okay, cool. <laughs> See? See? And, and somebody once told me, and Nate, you've probably heard this saying before, it is better to be prepared and not have the opportunity than to have the opportunity and not be prepared. Mm. And so many yep. times we miss the opportunity simply because we're not prepared. We didn't do the pre-work. We didn't make the data sheet. Somebody says, hey, this place is hiring. Go put in the application today. And you don't have the information prepared for you to go do right. the application. And so you say, oh, well, I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. And then you click on it tomorrow and the job's gone. gone. Yep. Right. So you've got to have a sense of urgency. If you really want to advance your career, you really want to take advantage of these opportunities that come your way. You need to be doing the preparation long before the opportunity is even there. And prepare for the things that you care about and you love and you want to do with your life, because that's going to drive you. You know, it's going to drive you instead of just trying to get a paycheck. You know, we don't want people. I don't want people to come into my office living for the weekend. You know, I don't want people coming in begging for Friday to come and so happy and so sad on Mondays when they get in there. I don't want to say the weekend's bad and not to have fun, but you know what? If you can't enjoy we spent this is a family we're with Monday through Friday mm -hmm. for a lot of jobs mm -hmm. from nine to five, you're spending a significant portion of your life you shouldn't be miserable well you think about it you you sleep for eight hours I'm, I, I'm not good at math I mean I have my open toed shoes on and I can't count on my toes but <laughs> there's you know right there's a 24 hours and then you take away the eight that you sleep and then you take away the four. 70 percent of your time is with this with these people <laughs> good Nate's got a number for me see that's what I need I need smart people 
article next to me that I already got the... Maybe Google that one for sure. Okay. <laughs> let's fact checking, fact yeah. checking, right? CNN, let's fact check. Okay. The point, though. The point is that you spend a considerable amount of time with the people that you work with. You spend eight to ten hours of your day engaged in your career, right? And the people around you don't want to be miserable. I right. remember working with somebody who was miserable in the job. And every day I used to look at her and go, why don't you just quit? Just stinking quit because mm-hmm. you make the environment like feel gross and people will quit if the environment yeah, is not negativity. conducive. Ugh. Yeah. It's so yucky. Mm-hmm. It's so yucky. And people do. They leave because they don't like the people that they work with or they find or there's one person that's really, really miserable, you know, and, and, you know, office politics, right? People walk around and go, I don't know why they don't get rid of that person. I don't know when they're going to quit. And you don't want to be that person if you don't know. Oh, <laughs> if you don't know who the person is in your office, it might be you. <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. I'm just saying, if look around, every office has one, every office has one, they might be somebody who's very talented. And see, that's another thing to remember. Sometimes your talent is not going to be enough. Let me say that again. There are times that your right. talent is not going to be enough. If you are not pleasant to be around, if you are just that person that's Humble. living for the weekend, <laughs> if you're just coming in, just in the nick of time, sliding into your desk, boom, mm-hmm. right? And getting the computer turned on. And as soon as it's lunchtime, you're out of there. And right, you got to let the business know that you are actively engaged and that you're really there with them. I mean, think about the military, right? They don't want people that don't really want to be there If you don't want to be there then go somewhere else we'll find other people because this is life or death right and when it comes to your career it kind of is life or death right Mm -hmm. (laughs) you think about it guess what nate what i gotta take another break let's do it it's working wednesday on in touch news radio we'll be right back Kitchen, where we're cooking Chicago style fried chicken and fish with the authentic Chicago style mouth sauce. Come check us out at our new restaurant located at 3320 East Osborne Avenue in the Jackson Heights area. We have a brand new menu which includes whole wings, catfish, pizza puffs, and much more. Call us at 813-368-5196. Again, that number is 813-368-5196. See you soon. Hi, this is Dale Day. Join me every Monday at 7 p.m. for Jazz at Miss Connie's House, bringing you the smoothest jazz and the coolest guests right here on In Touch Radio. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Wednesday. This is Working Wednesday. I'm Margaret Debelot, Miss D, the job coach. And we were talking about applying for jobs. We were talking about interviewing. We've got Nate Coco in the house today. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Again. No, please sit down. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And so, you know, Nate has a really unique perspective because he's had his own career journey and he's now helping other folks along in their career journey. And Nate, thank you for that. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Sometimes I meet candidates and I say, you know, you're probably so seasoned in your career that you need to be looking at how you can create jobs for other people. Many people come to me and they go, I can't seem to get a job. You know, I've been in this industry for this number of years and da 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 And I say, well, maybe, just maybe it's time for you to start creating jobs for other people. Becoming an entrepreneur uh, requires a lot of things. You know, people say, oh, well, I don't have the money. I don't have the time. I don't have the bandwidth. Excuses. Oh, man, hashtag no excuses. We're not doing that. But I do I do encourage people to consider, even if they start uh, in a consultative way or as they go to their next job, maybe think about transitioning that way eventually. Because, listen, America is the land of opportunity, not the land of jobs. Mm-hmm. Right? And people go, but you're a job coach. Why would you say that? Well, I'm also an entrepreneur. 
I'm also a serial entrepreneur and I have entered and exited the uh, jobs world more than once. And I know that it's a journey. Your career is in a, is a journey. It, it's not, you know, one size fits all. A uh, friend of mine is, is getting ready to retire. I'm so excited for her. That means she's been on that job a long time, but she's looking for the what next. She's ready. She spent the last six years building a nonprofit organization, and now she knows when she exits her career in that one thing that she was in for however many years before she retired, now she knows what she's going to do next. And and I encourage people to work on their what next while they're growing their career, while they're going through, whether they're working for someone or even if they're a business owner. So, Nate, I'm going to ask you just for uh, uh, about two minutes here to talk about do you ever consider your exit strategy for your business? You know, yes, you can you have you always have to consider and and my you can exit voluntarily or involuntarily, <laughs> I would say, right? So, and and I, and I'm not I'm not necessarily talking about being fired from a by a person, you know, cuz we're independent contractors and whatnot, but I think the world is changing so fast, so rapidly that a lot of the jobs that are here today are not going to be here maybe in 10 years, you know, my, right. my job included, who knows, you know, I think my, my company's preparing for preparing for the future. So we're not the Kodak and the, you know, I know they're still around on the Polaroid. They, Kmart. They, yeah. And they're reinventing themselves now, but you know, what did they lose because they weren't ready? So yeah, mm -hmm. having a clear exit strategy is, is key, you know, but that comes back to knowing who you are and what you want to do in your life, you right. know, and and if you're applying for jobs and and you know you know the long run, and you you're, you're probably going to be okay. But if you're applying for jobs and you're just saying, oh, I might like doing that, I might like doing that, there might be a step of homework that you got to do. You know, maybe doing some job shadowing. Maybe they need a coach. A coach, yeah. That's someone it. that someone that knows the world and can can say, you know what, your skill set will match up really well with this this industry. So teaching people how to transition their current skills into the next uh, viable career is something that I specialize in. It's uh, professionally called succession planning. And people should be looking at the what next. And people should be, if even if you're in a career, you should be doing, I know in your career, you absolutely have to do um, continuing education. Absolutely. I actually need to do, do my continuing <laughs> education. Most people don't know that I'm an insurance agent as well. Um, but continue in education so that you can continue to progress in your knowledge level. Mm -hmm. And maybe, maybe while you're secure in your job, start thinking about what you want to do next. Maybe you had a love for radio your entire career and you're looking for the opportunity to get there. And that's exactly what I did. You know, I looked for the opportunity to get there. I was doing something completely different, but I started volunteering in community radio. And I said, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to dig in and I'm really going to go this direction and I'm going to, put some boots on the ground as it pertains to this. And, and by being able to do that, I was able to transition and, you know, look at me. Now well, I have my you own follow show. your passion and then you figure out how that passion is going to create maybe in some income for you at the same time. And hopefully that works out. And sometimes it's a hobby and sometimes you uh, make it a full on career. Sometimes you make it a business. My, my thought process is always be thinking about the possibilities. What else can you do? Where else can you go? I mean, listen, if you're an excuses person, then I get it. I'm just not going to invite you over for dinner. Okay? <laughs> you just, no. Because I'm into people who have infinite possibilities with their skills, with their life. You know, go build some new skills. Go take some classes. You know, some community colleges mm -hmm. allow you to take classes you can, um, what's, what's the, you can monitor the class so you right. don't actually get credit for the class. I think Harvard has all their classes online. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So look into those things. That, you know what? Those things. That, now this one's for DJ CEO because he's the maturest person in the room. <laughs> he loves when I do that to him. Listen, DJ CEO, did you know that you could go and take classes and it really helps to keep you young? It helps to keep your brain engaged and 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 it wards off premature aging. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for filling in the blank because I was searching and a whole lot of other really not good words were coming in there. See, this is why we work as a team. I love it here at In Touch. We are a family and we support one another. And DJ CEO doesn't want to have to step on my toe. What's the class? 
well, there's all kinds of classes. You go take any class, anything that you're interested in. Uh, my grandmother, 87 years old, uh, when she was in her early 80s. Why did you group me with your grandmother? I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I, I didn't, didn't make that connection. I did, oh, see, I didn't. He he went there. I did not put him on that bus and take him there. He got a ticket all on his own. Tampa Bay Tammy, I need you to understand. I did not call your husband old. Hey, she's listening. She'll come after me. I know her. She'll come after me. Listen, I was not grouping you with my grandmother. I was simply saying that in her early 80s, she went to the community colleges and she took stained glass classes. It was a yeah. way for her to have something that she engaged in. And she's made me beautiful stained glass. But the idea is you can go places and you can, for whatever reason, go learn something else. It'll help to enhance your resume. It will help to enhance you as a person. It will help you find leads to, to, to jobs, leads to maybe a new career, leads to amazing people like Nate Coco. Thank you so much, Nate, for coming in today. It's, I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to be here. I, I, on that, I can I add a little a little something please do so i visited uh, pinellas technical college and they have technical colleges all over the place and i'm a big proponent that not everybody should be going to traditional college four-year degree mm -hmm. and go visit these technical colleges they have so many cool things that you're going to learn that you have no idea that even exist mm -hmm. that you might actually fall in love with be have a passion for welding you know they tell me welders are making over six figures in yeah, a lot of places they are. You know, but nobody wants to be a welder because, you know, they're not, you know, Mark Zuckerberg or someone like that because that n doesn't necessarily map to billionaire. But you know what? You can live a great life being a welder or be having one of these technical college skills. And and you can do it so much quicker and make good money doing it and really live good quality of life in the meantime. I absolutely agree with that. Having skills. Um, I've got uh, uh, my oldest son. He's in his 30s now, but he has a lot of skills and it was the skills that he had that caused him to have a very attractive resume. It was not a college degree. My oldest son, who makes more than me, I can say that out loud, he makes more money than I do, and he has skills. Good parenting. Yeah. Great parenting. <laughs> <laughs> he may agree with you on Tuesdays. <laughs> that don't work on Wednesday, though. <laughs> I taught my kids great work ethic, and, and I think that's the thing, is getting work ethic and having principles and having a, a good heart and being a good person. And, you know, I really get sad about this time every Wednesday because the show is coming to an end. But I am so happy that I had Nate on with me today. And if you want to get in contact with me, Miss D, the job coach, that's right. I am a job coach and I can take you through the transition process with your career, help you to get to the next job that you're looking for, help you to transition your career, help you with your succession planning, take you through the entrepreneurial mindset profile or just sit down and talk with you about helping you to answer the question what next in your career and perhaps even in your business my name is margaret debalot my legal name is margaret debalot torres so you might see that on things from time to time but i am miss d the job coach you can follow me on all social media at msd job coach you can also reach me at my website wwwmsd dash thejobcoach.com or guess what guess what i got a telephone you can call me on that thing 704-277-8714 this is working wednesday on in touch news radio see you next time